Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Donate as little as a dollar an episode to get your name in the show and access WMS Gold content. Check out our page at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show or click the link on our site. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show 422. It's uh, Mike Sorg, Sorgatron here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to talk wrestling and have some fun here with my co-patriots. First of all, Papa Lunchbox is on the line, sir. Hi everybody, it's Papa Lunchbox and I am on the line. And I don't know a song that has his lyrics in it, so I'm making one up. Also joining us from the Wet and Wild, uh, Johnstown, PA, is Bobby F. J-Town. All right, guys, I'm ready to talk some R-A-S-S-L-I-N, that's wrestling. Right, that's okay. Wrestling. <laughs> um, and of course, first, uh, thanks to our uh, basic sickness for our intro song uh, that we've been rocking into uh, for a while now. Uh, you can check out stuff from him at basicsickness.com, including free tracks. Uh, you can also check us out over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Uh, you can check us out on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Spreaker. Not on Blip TV or the Roku app anymore, unfortunately. It looks like uh, Blip TV got swallowed up by another company, so that is not going to be a thing anymore. Um, and you can also, uh, again, please find us on any of those. Uh, uh, subscribe to us, like us, comment on us, share it with your friends. Let everybody know about the mayhem if you're enjoying it. And also drop us a line to Good Times. Good Times. Good Times Good at Wrestling times. Mayhem Show. Dot com. And you can drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0 for the hotline as well. Um, and you can join us here every Tuesday at live.sorgatronmedia.com around about 9 p.m. Eastern time. And stick around for the Indie Mayhem Show where we try to talk to a lot of guys on the indie scene here uh, in the Pittsburgh area and also in Texas. Uh, because of our little connection out there. And also, please, if you do enjoy the show, if you want to give back a little bit, join our Patreon over at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Big thanks to our supporters out there. Uh, the Wrestling Revolution at the rest, re- wrestlingrevolution.com. And of course, our friend Bo Diggity. Woo! Uh, so. So first of all, uh, we don't have any uh, emails in particular. I think you guys were all too shocked by uh, last night's uh, change of... uh, I don't even know how to describe that, Uh, but we'll get that into a little bit. But first, I know, uh, LP, you wanted to do something very special. That's true, uh, Sir John. This week, in lieu of uh, emails, I felt that we should honor a great man. A wonderful emailer, and I was inspired uh, by this week's Raw by the uh, gorgeous Lana, who Mm -hmm. uh, held a celebration ceremony for the Russian hero himself. Uh, uh, Who is it? Was it? It's not Vladimir Kozlov. Who is it? Rusev. 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 (laughs) Rusev. That's right. I, all Russians look the same to me. We need so to learn I how to say that, badass in Russian. <laughs> <laughs> no, I felt that this week we should have a small ceremony honoring our own Russian. Big PPC. Sorg, if you would please cue the music, I have a short speech that I have prepared for Big PPC. <laughs> Yeah, Americanski. Be cheeky, Stindrovinskoy, 
Tenevoj stilom segodanja. Podpisali ovoboseni rabo. Eto vidja mestoj postionavaj stajo bolšim majakom deznet haja delja miljeno negro rabo katre bjelje opalo bjelogani. Jun štojka je nas pravi do dosti eto samo rado rasto o tem Big PPC. No sto let's pugate. Negro vedo ne svobote. To let's putuje. Zregran. Negro do sik por ke sak pra. I took my brushy sodia segonda. Aka dramatizava Big PPC. Nashley Rokobiski. Big PPC. Okay. Thank you. Translation. Very, very much. Let's talk. Big PPC. Best racket house bird. <laughs> <laughs> Big PPC, if you will watch your mailbox, you will find a large golden star that is actually made of chocolate. Wear it in good health, <laughs> my comrade. All right, the uh, the international reach out portion of the show is now over. Uh, so, of course, uh, uh, we looked uh, back last night uh, a, a big a big change where uh, uh, the Seth Rollins, of course, turning on the shield. Oh my God! Hearts. Everybody going crazy. Trail. What's Just that? Broke our hearts. Just broke everybody's heart. And some people I know did not react very well to it. And I know we have some samples of exactly uh, what might have transpired from Matt Carlin. Hey, hey guys. Hey, hey it's, uh, it's your pal from the mainstream media. Hey, uh, um, I, uh, um, Raw, Raw just ended. And, uh, I don't know if you guys saw the show, but, um, but Seth Rollins turned on the shield. Oh my god, we're. Okay, never mind. Okay, sorry. Um, I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but I'm hiding underneath my bed right now. Um, my wife saw the shield break up, and she went crazy. Hold up. Okay, guys, um, Sork, I need you to do me a favor. I know you won't probably get this bill tomorrow, but I need you to, um, call the police. I need you to tell them to come to, um, the house on one. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So I think we need I think we need to call Liam Neeson. <laughs> oh oh sorry. I forgot I forgot LB was on that line. <laughs> oh it's okay. Um so yeah, some other reactions of course. Mm-hmm. Uh I'm loving I don't want to play it play it because I know we'll get pulled in an instant from YouTube. But the uh the, the Simpsons, you can see exactly the point when yeah. his heart breaks was I've watched it five times today, uh over on the Facebook page. Uh some other stuff going on over there. Uh, I like the uh the dear the dear uh, Seth with oh. the uh the O C parody <laughs> slash Saturn and Alive digital short parody. Oh, I didn't. I don't think I saw that one. But there's been a lot of stuff. This is this is broken. A lot of stuff on the internet. Uh, again, our, 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 apparently before uh, the, the nuttiness, or maybe this is him recovered. Our friend of mainstream media, Matt Carlin, over at uh, mainstreammat.blogspot.com. Uh, Seth Rollins destroys the shield and Twitter, for instance. Um, a lot of really really angry tweets. Um, a lot of people are uh, uh, kill yourself, Seth Rollins. Um, oh, I hope you die. All these are adding him on Twitter, by the way. You is a bitch. You'll die with no friends around. From uh, uh, Mr. Anthony Priest. R a s s l i n. That's wrestling. 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 I hate you more than I have ever hated Evolution. The Wyatts. Anybody. And to think I was defending you this morning. Die. Jeez. Wow! 
<laughs> wow. People get into their You wrestling. bastard, I believe in the shield. The mark in me wants to kill you, but I'm a f I am a fan of your ring work. He's so conflicted. <laughs> At least he's nice about it. He's so conflicted. I hate Jesus you. Christ, you want so the only thing stopping him from killing a man is his <laughs> wrestling ability. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I never thought I could fucking hate someone so much. You're dead to me. Fucking die, traitor. So, wow. Jeez. Wow. Yeah. Wrestling is, is still real to Twitter, guys. Yeah. <laughs> what were you saying, LB? Nothing. I'm just, I'm in awe of. Yeah, <laughs> shocked. Just the, the no thought that anyone put into these tweets. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, and also, we had uh, a few. Well, we had a reaction shot from uh, 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 wife of Matt Carlin's, uh, uh, Jen Carlin's, on, on the Facebook as well. I know she's been. They're going. I wonder how this is going to go because they're supposed to be going to Columbus to watch a SmackDown. <laughs> with, not going to watch Shield or that uh, that iteration of it anymore. Well, not that iteration, at least. And hopefully, they still yeah. all come down the same way uh, because they got specific tickets for the Shield entrance. Oh no! Portion of the seating, so I'm hoping that still works out for them. Um, and There's I'll, still two left. <laughs> Jen, Jen posted something in the Facebook that uh, I, I'm not one to get. You know, to I don't want to be like an armchair booker or even like get my hopes up for something. But it was the Shield, but instead of Seth Rollins, it was CM Punk. And I mm. couldn't help but look at that and think, God, that would be really fucking cool. He it did jump be. on. He did jump on the Nexus. For mm -hmm. no explicable yep. reason. Um, he so, left you. He left he's you. He's not coming back. I know, I know he's not, but mm -hmm. man, wouldn't that be cool? It would be cool, though. <laughs> All would be forgiven. Yeah, yeah, kind of at that point, right? Um, it, also, we got another one here. I, I didn't realize this. Um, this one was posted. I can't tell who posted to our board from the link that I, I put in here. Uh, but probably Riz if it was come from WWE memes. Uh, but I guess this actually happened. Uh, there was a post last night from the DiGiorno's Pizza Twitter account. <laughs> Don't worry, Ambrose and Rain. Pizza will never turn its back on you. Hashtag yeah, the amazing. shield. Hashtag raw. I know pizza will never turn its back on me. Yep. 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 So there you have it. What's that? Just laugh. I was just laughing. Oh. Um, so there you have it. Like a lot of reaction. I don't know. What did you guys think last night? I know for me, I, I had a problem last night and I was dozing off actually the last hour raw due to some illness. I don't know if you can tell with me tonight. I'm still recovering a little bit. Uh, but I thought I was having a bad dream a little bit. Uh, when, when, when this happened, the fever, yeah, it felt like a fever dream, uh, uh, when it, when it went down, um, definitely, definitely, definitely the most shocking moment. Cause like it really seemed to come out of left field. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. None of us saw it. I thought it was great. I, I thought it was a, a very high spot to, uh, raw last night, I think wasn't bad. It just seemed to drag. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And like it, it, it was something segments were like, is this still happening? It, it was something WWE needed to do, shake things up a bit. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it, it was like so out of left field, nobody really saw it coming, I don't think. I mean, because they were the the, were the the unit that was working together last or on Sunday night. Like, Evolution had a little bit of problems working together. The, the, the Shield was like, together we stand, divided we fall, you know? Mm -hmm. And then just the next night, nope. And that's the thing, and, and it really, it really did kind of. It felt wrapped up most of what could ha what what could happen with what their their two big storylines. Of course, mm -hmm. the Daniel Bryan thing kind of you know is is uh, dependent on whatever is happening with his recovery. Uh, mm -hmm. I like how there's like there's an option A and there's an option B. Um, okay, uh, but but you know, uh, and I like what they're doing with Wyatt, how, like, Wyatt's not here and now, like, Harper's saying, now we have to do this, you know. I, I really like those reactions, and I hope I hope they do something cool with, like, a resurgence of Bray or something for wherever he's going to go from here, which is, you know, obviously going to be something going into uh, whatever he'll do for SummerSlam, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, Batista walking away was, was, was a good way to end that, you know. Giving a princess wave. <laughs> giving a princess wave. Did I mean, why was, was the amazing. princess... Did I miss I why there was a princess wave? Yeah. 
That was part of your fever dream. It's hilarious. That was part of my fever dream too. Okay. I also did see a picture where he was holding up a puppet instead. That was a fever yep. dream. Definitely. That was a fever dream. <laughs> I'm really confused on a lot of these now. So, um, but anyways, uh, uh, with that, uh, we'll, we'll I'm sure talk a little bit more about the uh, the shield and payback and a bit more when when we get the uh, rest of the panel in here. Uh, but in the meantime, go take a look at this from uh, Sorgatron Media, and we'll be right back. Hey guys, we're back. Go check out that and uh, other uh, cool stuff over at SorgatronMedia.com slash store. You can uh, follow us, uh, follow Sorgatron Media on Twitter, and we often retweet them over on the Mayhem Show uh, accounts as well. Uh, the Facebook, all that kind of stuff. Uh, get on the mailing list. Uh, we've been putting out a lot of uh, kind of flash sales lately uh, for the digital downloads, and there's all kinds of cool stuff there. Uh, again, from IWC, RWA, Prime Wrestling, we have some stuff uh, that's going up, and uh, we're working on a few deals for some more wrestling groups uh, to be featured on our uh, digital download page. So uh, please go check that out. Support some indie wrestling. Uh, so with that, it's time for Remember When? Remember when Because you don't remember then So what we do Remember for you In the segment called Remember when This week of course again like we mentioned in the first segment uh, How we are all shocked at Seth Rollins turning. Didn't really see him to be the guy uh, to be doing that, and especially then. Uh, but uh, so, so we're gonna look back and so, what were some other big breakups? Uh, whether it be faction breakups or more broadly, just big, big uh, 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 turns that shocked you. Does anybody have a, have one to go first? I do. Oh, you do. You sir, and it's tangentially related to this one, to the Seth Rollins business. Okay. Because once upon a time, there was a wrestler with a lot of promise. His name was Batista. Mm -hmm. He turned on a young man known as Triple H, the Randy Orton and Ric Flair, and that, and I, I do kind of hate to say this, I feel that that was the highlight of Batista's career. I don't think he was ever liked more than he was when he gave the thumbs down to Hunter. I don't think he's ever been as popular as uh, during that that little bit of business. And uh, I don't think he's had a match that was better than the Hell in a Cell match he had against Triple H to wrap up that feud. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was his high point. I agree. Awesome. Awesome. What about you? Uh, what about you, Bobby? I'm gonna go uh, with Paul Bearer turning on the Undertaker. Oh no! God, Paul damn Bearer it, was Bobby. with Paul Bearer was with the Undertaker for six years. Never thought in a million years he would turn on. He turned his back on him by hitting him with the urn, and went with mankind to manage mankind, and eventually bring in Kane, and. That that's the whole another story. But I remember that one. I was shocked. Awesome. What about you, Mad Mike? Joining us here in the second half. <laughs> All right. Well, I was going to do that one, so I was just thinking about the Undertaker because I was watching the network. But um, instead, I will go with uh, around 2001 when WWE was having a tag match against WCW. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And Paul, Paul Heyman was on commentary. Whole bunch of guys in the ring. A Donnie Brook ensued. Then all of a sudden, every guy who used to be in ECW kind of turned around and looked at the WWE guys and beat the shit out of them. Mm -hmm. Granted, the follow-through on this was never as good as the original yeah. turn. But the formation of the alliance 
was amazing, and no one can fault that. Mm -hmm. Guys, I got so sad when Paul Heyman turned on RVD. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming because of the, the weed thing, and he lost the belt, and he lost both belts in consecutive nights on consecutive shows before they kicked his ass out of the WWE. Uh, and then uh, he never wrestled again until he came back a couple years ago, right, Sork? Never wrestled again until he came back, like, like yeah. last year. Never again. Never. Nope. Never wrestled anywhere else. Never. Blake Did Foley never had one more match after that WrestleMania with Edge in the Flaming yeah. Table. Nope, 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 didn't happen. And uh, Ric Flair totally didn't wrestle again after fighting Shawn Michaels. Nope. Never happened. Nope, never happened. Uh, guys, tell us your uh, Remember When's up on the Facebook group, up on uh, comments for the YouTube video, uh, wherever you find us and want to communicate. Uh, so with that, hey, check out a cool thing. Uh, another way you can support the show is uh, uh, ProWrestlingTees.com. we got some crazy stuff up there. Like the good times uh, T-shirt, the property of mayhem. Oh, uh, right here. Oh, right wait, here. wait, he's hey, wearing it right there. I got it. I got it this week. Wait, why is the video not working? Oh, there he is. There he is. Property of mayhem, right there. Ah! T-shirt ninja. Okay. You can look as sexy as DJ Lunchbox does right now. Oh yeah. Well, there's also a lot of other great stuff there. Of course, supporting a lot of the guys. Uh, uh, this is Macho Man shirts. There's there's gold dust. Uh, but there's also another really cool new one I saw pop up. Chikara actually has a t-shirt store up here now. So if you want to go support the brand new, just relaunched Chikara, uh, go there. And there's a lot of stuff actually for uh, uh, wrestling promotion tees. A lot I haven't heard of, but there is some stuff we do talk about over on the Indie Mayhem show, including uh, Absolute Intense Wrestling, Beyond Wrestling. Uh, a lot of cool stuff there. Uh, so go check it out. And, and go check out like the individual wrestler stores as well. Uh, uh, guys like Johnny Gargano are on there, Zima Ion. So go so, go support indie wrestling. Go support wrestling in general. And this is a great place to, to kind of do that right off the bat. Uh, so go to Pro Wrestling T But start at ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. And make sure to throw one of ours in, that, in your basket as well. Uh, so with that, uh, I understand Total Divas also ended while the rest of us were watching a pay-per-view. Um, so Mike, what's what's going on with that? All right, um, Total Divas. It was actually a good episode. It was actually a good episode. Um, only one to two people in the cast were horrible. <laughs> uh, um, and that would, of course, be Cameron and Natty, because they're horrible people. Um, but it actually gave a really cool backstage look at WrestleMania. It, uh, it, gave, it gave a much better look than it did last. That it did the uh, the season one premiere or the season one finale, whichever, whichever episode it was last year where the the Bellas and Punkadackles match got cut. But it was really, really interesting to watch like backstage reactions, especially to the finish of Taker and Lesnar, because obviously they didn't know what was going to happen, and they're all watching backstage, and they're like. Like, some of the reaction was, oh, fuck, Taker just lost. And then the reaction was, we have to fucking follow that? <laughs> like, it, it was, and I, as much as I don't like some of the people on Total Divas, believe me, if you watch the Mayhem Live tweet of Total Divas, you know I don't like them. I do not envy the position they had to be in at WrestleMania, coming off, like Natty called it, Probably the hardest spot to ever have in a pay-per-view in WWE history, and she's not wrong for once. Mm -hmm. But there was one other little gem, and I have to say this because if this person listens to the show, and God willing, I hope you do, please email in, email me personally so I can thank you. Um, Eve Marie was was. Uh, was worried about her first individual signing for WWE because she wasn't with anyone else. And someone at Access waited on a huge line, I'm assuming, because all lines at Access were huge, just to go up to Eve Marie and tell her that she sucked at wrestling. Aww. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, 
Granted, what I'm guessing happened, because this happened a lot to me at Access, that person was waiting in line for someone else, someone that they really liked, like maybe a Wade Barrett or a William Regal or something, and then was switched out with Viva Marie at the last minute. But still, to get to literally go up and get Eva Marie's autograph and saying, yeah, you're not that good at wrestling. Bravo. Bravo, And they sir. put this on the show? Yes. They put it on the show oh. and Eva Marie even reacted to it. Wow. It was amazing. Well, because the, the whole thing was her being nervous about wrestling in front of like 80,000 some odd people at Wrestlemania because she doesn't have that much experience and she knows she's not the best wrestler in the world but she overestimates her abilities <laughs> yes hashtag all green everyone <laughs> wow but yeah um, yeah w- just watch like if you can find a snippet online on YouTube of that part from Total Divas it was amazing and the Bree Daniel Bryan wedding was actually really sweet like legitimately, like it was better than the Naomi, John Uso wedding, and it was it was really good. It was really touching. Awesome. Now I know LB, you you have uh, an update for your your non wrestling friend that is uh, uh, really into Total Divas. That's true. Uh, it's uh, one of my coworkers is into Total Divas, and she mentioned one week that uh, that she it, it got her to watch Monday Night Raw, and. Um, she didn't like it. <laughs> uh, I figured that was that, but we were having lunch today, and she's like, I watched Raw again. And she was all, like, half ashamed, and I was like, don't be ashamed. No, no, you'd be good about that. Um, and apparently she watched, uh, uh, which, uh, which is the Bella that's with John Cena? Nikki. 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 She watched Nikki get the shit kicked out of her by uh, by Oksana and Alicia Fox, and I think she watched a couple segments after that, and she was like, "Okay, hey, I'm done for this week." But <laughs> uh, that just goes to show the fact that she didn't just watch it once; she watched it twice. Mm-hmm. So something's fucking going on. It does work. I mean, it really, really does. All all you I've said this a million times before. All you need is an in. To wrestling, if you can find something that entertains you, and you'll at least stick around for some of the rest of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and I think, and you look at the way that they do Monday Night Raw and some of these other shows, they don't expect you to watch everything, too. If that Total Divas means that she watches an hour of Raw every week, looking for that Divas, you know, match or something, uh, with which usually there's two of them now anymore, um, then it did its job. You know, it's got it, another person that could keep watching, that could buy some merchandise, that could buy a pay-per-view or WWE Network if they get that far into it. Yeah, that, it's amazing. WWE it's, it's almost perfect, assumes you it's, don't it's watch it. totally working. But sorry, we a little bit... What, what was that, LB? I was I was saying that it's amazing and it's it's totally working, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, what were you saying, Mike? I was saying that WWE almost assumes you don't watch... WWE ever. It's like it's... Because, of the, because I mean, I was watching uh, Main Event on the network, mm-hmm. and right after Main Event, they had a commercial for SmackDown on the network, mind you, saying, did the Shield outlast Evolution? And did John Cena survive the Wyatt family? Find out on SmackDown. Well, even even on Raw, there was that, that, mm-hmm. that but, commercial. Okay, well, I, but on Raw it makes sense because there's been no other programming since it's payback. So that means you didn't watch the pay-per-view. Fine. But there's been Raw, and if you see that commercial on the network, you literally just watched the main event where they told you what happened. What it, well, that's what I'm saying. During Raw, it was like halfway through Raw we saw this commercial, and I'm like, but I just found out everything that happened last night from the first like 10 minutes. So, like, those people, few things. People so, have but, short attention spans now. That's true. People might tune into Raw late. That's true. That's true. People might tune, But it was literally right after you watch a main event on the network. Like, 
I don't know. It's it's just kind of funny. Well, that's the thing. Going into pay per views, since it is so far out, they make those commercials probably like you know, I mean, half a week in advance. They can't really allude to anything for the next Raw because that spoils things and makes things all all the more complicated. They it, it can't really say anything because they they make they make it like Tuesday or Wednesday, and it has to still apply a week and a half later. So, I, and, and the spots are the spots, and they're, they're not going to change that as far as, like, commercial placement. Uh, but, but more to this idea of, of uh, you know, it really feels like WWE kind of scattershots itself. Because, yeah, they got main event, yeah, they got superstars, yeah, they got even SmackDown. But all of it is tracking back to what happened on Raw this week. You could really not watch SmackDown and kind of be okay. Or you could only watch SmackDown and still be okay. Because if there's anything really important, they replay the whole thing on SmackDown. Or with the, the rematches, too. It have been pretty ridiculous. So, uh, LB, it sounds like you were trying to say something. Nope, I was just agreeing. Okay. <laughs> um, About watching SmackDown. <laughs> uh, Bob, Bobby, what do you think? You have any th- um, thoughts on this uh, uh, concept? I think here? people nowadays have have short attention spans. Mm-hmm. And that's that's probably why, because more more or less people are like looking down at their phones or their laptops or doing whatever else on on, on So they have to keep them en- engaged somehow. Like, you know, did they see it? Did they not? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, unfortunately, it makes it hard for a, a rest of us that kind of want to see all of it, and then it's mm-hmm. like, ah, here's a rebound I can skip. So. At least they don't put the rebounds on NXT anymore, because they used to back when they were on like just like Hulu and whatever locally they were on. Uh, you would get a re- raw rebound in the middle of it, and thankfully we are actually kind of separating that out, let it be its own thing. It's like, mm, you know, that has nothing to do with this. No, nothing to do with this. So uh, moving that on, so the pay per view, of course. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else we want to touch on. Again, I kind of dozed off a little bit there. I, again, I love what they're doing. The Wyatts, how how like something happened. Brayden just show up, spouting stuff, and turning this into a win like he did last time, or last two times actually. Um, it's I, I, I guess the first time. Now that I think about it. Um, what you know. What do you see happening with the Wyatts? Are, are, do we like this uh, Harper stepping up thing? I love that Harper's becoming uh, uh, kind of a second in command for this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because he's good. He's, he's very good he's at, uh, at cutting promos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he got a great promo on Monday. Well, all right. Um, we should, I think, before we get any more qualifiers of Money in the Bank, I think we shall predict who we want to see win Money in the Bank this year. Now, is it, did I, again, let me know if this is a fever dream or not. Did I hear that, that Daniel Bryan has his match with Kane, or if he's not able to yeah. do that, the Money in the Bank will be for the title? Yeah, correct. Yeah, but oh, wow. Bryan's going to be able to wrestle. I catch that last night. I mean, that, that I makes think, things. I think Bryan's going to be able to wrestle. I don't think they'd throw that out there if they didn't think he'd be able to. I still well, think it's up in the air. I really yeah, think, it's still yeah, I, think, I think they're covering their bases with that. Yeah. 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 What they should do is have if have the regular title match, and if Dan O'Brien can't, uh, have the regular Money in the Bank, and then have another Money in the Bank, like they have, they've done two before, do that one for Money in the Bank. Briefcase. Like a separate one. For like the people that didn't qualify for the, the title. Maybe. So like, like the loot... So like the losers and all the qualification matches end yeah, up. Yeah, throw them a bone. <laughs> like oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, go win Whoever the title. Yeah. But then you have two matches with twelve guys in them, and I, I think that might be a little bit much. Yeah. Hey, I remember well, we I are... mean, they, they used to have that. I yeah. mean, they used yeah, to have two money team. in the bank matches, one for each title. Mm-hmm. But you also had two championship matches to go along with that. Now you have one of those being a championship match and one being a Money in the Bank match. It's a lot of consolidation of the roster into two matches. It's, I don't see the difference. Yeah, I don't see the difference between years before when they've done this with the but two it, of them. I, all, all I'm saying is if you think about 12 guys, all right, one of those is eventually going to be the IC champion. One of them is going to be the U.S. champion. That's two more matches gone. Mm-hmm. So th- that's one. Like, you need to have actual secondary storylines for them to be able to do that and right now they're not really doing much of that no, no. 
Uh, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see what they do with this. Uh, payback. Good pay per view. Wait, wait, I have one more thing on oh, Raw. Yeah. Uh, I really like what they're doing with the Rhodes brothers. So. Yeah, because it's not it's not your usual, you know, ego getting in the way breakup of a tag team. It's mm -hmm. I care about you because you're my brother, and I think you need a better tag team partner than me. That's awesome, and I don't, I can't think of any other time I've seen some, I've seen that storyline. What, what, who did he pick as his partner last night? I, I wasn't. A... Uh, your fever Sin Cara. Sin Cara. Sin Cara, seriously? Yeah, and it, tonight yeah, it was. It's COVID. a work in progress. Yeah. That's okay. fine. Okay, all right. The guy that's but... like, like, like lost twice to the brand new Bo Dallas. That's who you pick as the tag team partner yeah. to be better than Cody Rhodes. But it was the good Sin Cara. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. There's only the good Sin Cara now. The the bad Sin Cara is dead. No. R.I.P. Dead. Not literally. No, not literally. Dead. But... Dead to us. Hashtag original sin. <laughs> He's in Mexico. Oh, Bobby. Which is no. <laughs> Bobby. No. Original face. Oh no. wow. Oh. Oh. Right. So, but um, yeah. There's also like I, I like what they're doing with the Rhodes brothers, but I fear that it's going to take a turn. I fear that because Goldust keeps losing these matches, and I think that may lead to Cody saying, "I've gotten you a whole bunch of new tag team partners. You keep losing with them. That means you were the problem and not me." Hmm. I can see that. I can see that. Mm -hmm. But still, I mean, that's that's still something I haven't seen before, which that's true. I'm into. That's true. I like it. I like it. Um, One thing I suggested last night during the the Rusev celebration on Raw, they need to bring Kozlov back and have Lana manage them to the tag titles. That's just my I like suggestion. that. <laughs> I can see that. I, I think it's been long enough that uh, Kozlov's credibility can be restored. Mm hmm. I love WWE. I love Double Double E. I I would I would be okay with that only if Lana hosted their tea party. <laughs> wow. Um Wow. Alright, we gotta touch base on this pay per view here. Payback, it's the second payback they've ever held. Um kind of the at least we we don't have over the limit anymore. Thank you. Um that's, I, I always hated that as a concept. Um, of course. Why can't we just go back to backlash? I know. I miss. I miss trying to avoid those blades flying at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, I would like dodge them. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, uh, headlined uh, by the big main event, uh, Shield and Evolution. I loved this match. It was brutal. Yeah. There was a lot going on. Uh, for a final match for the Shield, I think it really made those guys even more than the last one did. Uh, that they let the Shield all win clean uh, without losing anybody. Uh, which which even more perplexes the turn the next night. Because there's no like, oh, he's the weak link. Or I'm mad because you guys weren't there when I got pinned or something like that. Which is kind of what I expected out of, the, out of uh, uh, something like this. But uh, tremendous match, a lot of fun. What did you guys think? I enjoyed it. I thought it was amazing. I, I thought, thought it was very I well done. I thought it was fine, but I thought that it was kind of weird that Payback was more extreme than Extreme Rules was. Yeah, yeah, but I mean that's a problem when you're you're doing these build up matches. Um, I mean, well, we went from like a steel cage to to last man standing for Cena and Bray, you know. Um, like, you know, I had this problem before when we had Hell in a Cell as a pay per view, right in the middle of a feud. So your middle rubber match feud match is a freaking Hell in a Cell, you know. Uh, you know, you you have to to meet the the pay-per-views rules, you know, whether it be a TLC or something like that. I'm with you on that. Uh, but I think they brought I don't know, it built it built properly. And did they even do it wasn't it wasn't officially extreme for their match last month. No. No. No, it wasn't. No. They we've gone away from the every match has to be extreme rules. 
we just yeah. kind of don't talk about and hope nobody notices. Uh, which I hate when they do that. I really do hate when they. I, I I like it when they fill. You know, it's like when lockdown says, "Hey, not every match is going to be in the cage." You know, um, I don't know. I like those full theme pay per views like that, and and I I feel like they miss out when they they don't do that. But I, I understand why they did, so they could do a full knockout drag out match. I this. don't think this was in the cards though. No, you think this is? No, this? I, I don't think the Seth Rollins thing was in the cards. I don't, I don't think it was, I, because it seems like it's coming out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And I mean, granted, for Raw, that makes it a hell of a surprise. Yeah. But it doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense, considering when we all thought the Shield was going to break up, it was Seth Rollins that kept them together. Yeah, yeah but there was a time. When he was the one that was like, I should just leave both of you because you're arguing so much. Mm -hmm. So. Either way, and we don't have an explanation. We won't have an explanation for a week. Every 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 show's gonna pontificate on that. I I was it was horrible trying to listen to the post show last night um, on WWE Network, uh, uh, guessing at this stuff. Um, but. <clears throat> It was it was interesting, and they're very there was a lot of arguing going on, um, but still, I, 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 it was a good finisher match for this, and maybe because of the Daniel Bryan thing, maybe that's why they did switch, so they have something more interesting going on, going on, uh, go, going from here. Um, I'm very I'm very interested to see Seth Rollins in a tag match with like tagging with Triple H and tagging with Randy Orton because I mean that's that's something we haven't seen before it's fresh and it's new and it's mm -hmm. interesting and I think it's great I'm on board and Seth has already been spotted it's wearing skinny jeans since he did take uh, <laughs> Batista's place and he's actually been cast as Doctor Strange no that's a joke what? that's not right that's a joke that's, that's a joke right. because Batista's in Guardians that's a joke Reaching out there, reaching out there, man. Yes. Uh, why? <laughs> now, I know some people have a problem with the end of the Wyatt and the Cena match. I do not. Uh, I have I, no problem with this. What? That was fun. Sorg, I, I wouldn't have a problem with it if it wasn't every single last man standing match having to have a gimmick, gimmick as to why the person physically can't stand up anymore. I think it's well within the rules. I, I didn't like the duct tape version of it, but um, I thought this made sense. I oh. like the duct tape version of it better. I was sad it wasn't forklifting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. John Cena's like, I'm from a small town too, bitch. <laughs> I can drive a forklift if I want to, dang it. I would have loved it if he just had a whole parade of little children in C Nation gear pile on top of Bray Wyatt so he literally couldn't stand up. That would have been better for me, but oh my just, god, the internet would have fucking melted. That would have been bonkers. <laughs> well, like, Jesus, like Bray used have come apart at the one scenes. child to take down John Cena. John Cena used an entire kindergarten class to take down Bray Wyatt. I, I want to point something out here. Uh, Amon's in the chat room saying um, um, the problem was Cena was tentative of hitting Bray with chairs because it would prove Bray's <laughs> point at WrestleMania. Right, um, and, yeah, he and now he's throwing steps fifty feet. No, but no, he explains this though. Oh, that's, this, that's his new special no, move, though. This actually gets explained on the fallout in his press conference because he talked about how you know it wasn't okay for him to hit him with a chair at WrestleMania when it wasn't like a extreme rolls match. But now that it's a uh, falls count anywhere and all that stuff counts, it's well within the. The, the framework but, of what he can do. But Sork, he hesitated in the cage match, too. True, true. So, I, no. Well, so maybe I'm Bray will come back and I'm say that he's finally done his business and corrupted John Cena. It was a means to sell merchandise. It was all, it was all pushed, <laughs> it was all pushed that he, he never backed down, though. Yeah, and, and did you notice he come out holding the towel and he left oh. holding up the armband? That, that he's like, buy this on shop.wwe.com. Well, let's be honest. That's what all of this is. is, is, is yeah, exactly. All of this is you know, a ploy you know, for you, you know, to pay Michael for the Bay network and to buy the t-shirts and buy the towels and buy the, the diabolical armbands. Yeah. That's all this is. 
Yep. I want a way Barrett armband that turns it inside out so I can hit people. <laughs> Red Rocket. Bobby, no. Red Rocket. If video games taught you nothing, you don't do what you see on a screen. I can hack using X. That's a different show. <laughs> <laughs> no, but John Cena is kind of like the Michael Bay Transformer movie of the WWE. The what? Like, no, <laughs> like, like, he's there. He's a merch selling machine. He's going to make a. He's going to do a lot of things that go boom with high spots. And you know, you always know what's going to happen at the end. And kids goddamn love it. Yes, exactly. And it, kids fucking love it, and adults hate it. It's. I mean, if we have Mike, if we have John Cena writing Yoshitatsu on the on the SummerSlam poster, you know where that came from. What? He also has Mark Wahlberg in him. Yo, she's a dinosaur. Optimus Prime, dinosaur, Dinobots. Sword, can we talk about one other thing? Uh, sure, Bobby. <laughs> Anything to get me off of this topic. How about that NXT <laughs> pay per view? Oh yeah, Takeover was last week. Um, thank you, Bobby. Um, <laughs> and and I want to notice, like, like this is this was the 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 NXT live event that didn't have a bunch of gimmicks. The first one had a ladder match. It had a two out of three falls match. Uh, this one was, let's have a wrestling show, guys. Straight up wrestling. Straight up wrestling. Uh, one of the best Divas matches I think I've seen in a while. Yeah. Um, just, well, kind of. Kind of? There was one part that really bothered me. What's that? Um, the use of the figure four leg lock by Natalia when she doesn't know how to use it. Okay. <laughs> No, like, like they, like I didn't notice it until I rewatched it. When they, when they were doing the figure four reversals, like it looked really great, but the whole concept of the figure four is when you roll over once, then the pressure's reversed. But Natty rolled over completely once, and then thought that she was the one applying it. Oh, oh, that yeah, happens. Yeah, it gets I, confusing. I mean, I guess, but it was... Bret Hart was not impressed about the way that oh, Charlie... Bret Hart, Bret Hart... <laughs> this no Bret like, Hart. Why did, why did Bret have to stand hard camera for that whole match? Yeah. He... Oh, my God. Ric Flair should have been hard camera that whole match because he sold more Wait. than... He sold more than uh, Mojo Rawley did in his match against Rusev. Guys, we had Bret Hart uh, in Meadville for IWC. It was fairly uneventful. <laughs> Like, I was yeah, just like... It's pretty like, much the same thing. I don't think he does reactions. No, 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 no. I, I, I think that's just, like, how he is. But, like, at a certain point, I'm like, hey, give, me. hey, turn around, give me a shot at Bret Hart. And then Bret Hart would, like, look at the camera. Like, why do you have the camera on me? <laughs> why know? am I here? How did I get here? It, I, it just... It's just... Um, anyways. Uh, but, no, uh, great show. With that, I thought the uh, Tyler Breeze... Sami Zayn match was, was incredible. Nice. I think that really yep. showed what Tyler Breeze can do. Even their botches were amazing. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Great recoveries. I, I'm putting that on on Sammy's side there. But, um, can we all agree the best moment of the night was Mojo Rawley just getting a complete ass kicking by Rusev? <laughs> Maybe for you, but not for me. I loved it. No, but that that segment was exactly what it needed to be. That <laughs> segment was exactly what it needed to be. That was just great. And and, and then more amazing. I don't know if how many of you guys stuck around for this, but I actually watched the uh, the the post show. Paul Heyman, Paul Heyman needs to be on every yeah. post show like this. The questions he asked, um, especially like the the, the Natalia, um, uh, tell me, do they what? what <laughs> Do, do they, all the, the heart members have to be neutered when they get married or something like that? Oh, yeah, it's like, the do they have to be neutered yeah. before they marry into the heart family <laughs> or after? Um, no. If you look at Bret Hart, it's before. Oh. <laughs> I loved his comment about Michael Cole, marriage counselor and divorce attorney, <laughs> divorce counselor. Yeah. Sorg, did you <laughs> see the interview that, um, that Michael Cole had with Natalia and Tyson before the show? On the pre-show, yes. Yes, it's it. wow. That was awkward. That and was I, so like, and I forget who said it. I think it was someone on um, the NX while we were doing the hangout on Thursday. Doctor Shelby, marriage counselor. That was me. That was you, Bobby. <laughs> yeah, that was me. Bobby, that was genius, and I, <laughs> I want them to do that more than I want to see Bad News Bear come out to cult the personality on Sunday. <laughs> oh, I, 
<laughs> want Dr. Shelby marriage counselor so bad. Uh, whoa. Somebody's got a loud chair out there. I've got to I've got to really oil up this chair. Yes. <laughs> uh, so it, it, I I also want to throw out that the main event was uh, very good. I enjoyed that tremendously. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Andy, Fucking, uh, Neville, uh, and uh, Tyson Kidd. Uh, Tyson Tyson. Kidd. If you were if you ever wondered like why is Tyson Kidd still have a job, this is why. Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't think anyone wonders why Tyson Kidd has a job because they know he's a good wrestler. Yeah. I think people just wonder why JTG has a job. Still a mystery. Most people don't hey, know. Hey, six year anniversary job. today. It's, it's <laughs> what? By the WWE, but for six years. Six years. Wow. Yeah. Well, I think they're just keeping Evan Bourne hired so he doesn't go to TNA. Oh fuck! I forgot about Evan Bourne. Shit, he's still employed too. That's funny, that's my porn looking that's motherfucker. My, uh, future Endeavor guy. <laughs> wow. Two years running. Vince McMahon just wow. lost seven hundred something million dollars. <laughs> he needs to fucking trim the fat. The Evan Bourne gay porn fat. Doesn't matter. I won the pool with Ezekiel Jackson. Yep, he, did. he did. Wow, big we'll play that That's what you call Dominic. Quietly, he was he was let go for like two weeks before anybody realized. Um <laughs> Rest in peace, final ECW champion. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, wow. Did you watch DNA? Nope. Damn. Okay, so I was the only poor soul that did. Um, it, it was, it's bad. Uh, so, like, oh, go ahead. Uh, no, it, it's just so bad. TNA is so bad right now, and apparently MVP got hurt over the weekend, so oh, now no. they might not even be able to have the Slammiversary main event. Oh no. Uh huh. Happy Slammiversary! <laughs> this is what happens. This is what happens when you record 18 shows in advance. Well, this is something that always happened with um, old WCW stuff, too. Like, this is always a problem. Um, like guys having a belt that don't really have a belt anymore, you know. Um, <laughs> hey, some uh, stuff from the chat room. Eamon saying, uh, notice how, uh, uh, talking about Heyman, how he looks upset, upset during Rose's post-show entrance, as opposed to JBL, who buries him on commentary. <laughs> oh, Annoyingly. Paul, Paul Heyman no-sold Rose's, uh, Adam Rose's post-show entrance, like... Bret Hart watching Shawn Michaels <laughs> dance with his pants off. The like, best part when he's like, I prefer being a lemon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, also, uh, best announced team ever, Regal, Saxon, Phillips, uh, car... <laughs> what does he say? Carve them into a monument. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'd go that far, but they, they, well. they were fine. And also, they were he... fine. And I think, I think Eamon's just hyping them as the best announced team ever because let's face it the other options we have out right now on televised wrestling are really really bad well the two of them um uh, sans regal i think the two of them also do main event in superstars yes. am i right yes. okay yes so so you do get a little bit of, on a bigger stage uh they are the best right now to deal with it um well there you go uh regal has the it, that that team has the right bits because uh, it's got I, well, here's a problem. They both sound the same to me. I don't know which one's which. Yes. Oh, I've had. Yeah, am I, had I the only problem. one problem? Like, I feel like I'm like I don't know which one it is until they are like, oh wow. I, like I just presume I'm always listening to the black guy, and then I see a picture. <laughs> and it takes, it I'm takes like, a oh, you, who's you the skinny white dude? Do. And it, uh, and Regal's there too. And then all of a sudden there's Rick Knight Young as well. And and uh, it takes a while when you're listening to somebody new to get used to their voice though. Yeah, it's, and so I've been having a bit of a problem with that. With the, yeah, but I've been listening to NXT for a while. But they keep yeah. switching it up because they put Tenzai in there for a while. And they put other yeah. people in there. And where has Big Tenzai gone? You know, I kind of miss him on commentary and everything. I, uh, I kind of just want the NXT commentary team to be William Regal and Paul Heyman. That'd be fun. I think, I think that would be the perfect commentary team because Regal can definitely do like a straight man play-by-play -play guy. Yeah. And Paul Heyman could just be color. Uh, here's Eamon saying in the chat room, uh, they are great on main event as well. Byron Saxon can tell a story without sounding like an idiot. Phillips is a great straight man, and Regal is 
God among men. Well, yes. I, can, I think we can all agree on that one. He's a man. Yeah. He's, a, he's <laughs> a man's man. So, uh, if nothing else, if you want great commentary, go over to NXT as well. So, uh, hopefully this is the future. You know, hopefully they eventually get elevated. You know, I don't know how long Michael Cole will be at this, you know. Uh, he's not like everybody else that's been, like, you know, an announcer on whatever other companies forever. Um, there's not a lot of options out there. Um, um, there's an option. I mean, there are options, but there's not there's as many. There's an option, and he works for WWE.com. No, there's that, too. There's that, too. I actually I mean, did oh, listen to it. They had an article of, of people that quit and a uh, playlist uh, uh, because of Batista <laughs> quitting and the first one was him quit quitting last time uh, but I went back wow. yes I went to the Joey Styles uh, I quit I'm not good enough for backlash you know yeah. <laughs> uh, still oh, the yeah. best promo ever 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 but now he's on WWE.com doing awesome things like hey check out all these caskets we have here <laughs> <laughs> oh Sorg uh, we have to talk about the Jornos I know we did. You had, we we you did had in a, the first half. We need to talk more about it. Okay. Because they had a, they had a lot of tweets about pizza. Okay. And about wrestling. Um, they like they uh, said that CM Punk should um, he would come back if they gave him free pizza. The, just every the oh. account. I'm trying to bring it up. Uh, Fun fact, did you know Ric Flair could could slice a pizza into per eight perfectly sliced pieces with a single chop? Hashtag woo, hashtag raw. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, <laughs> if Heel Ziggler doesn't get a title shot soon, I'm going to throw a perfectly good pizza on the ground. I'm serious. Don't make me do it. Wow. So somebody, somebody over there is a huge wrestling fan. I, love I don't know who at yeah, the they were <laughs> would be a great idea because I don't even remember seeing a DiGiorno's ad on Raw last night. But and that's the great thing about Twitter is you just say, okay, what's trending on Twitter right now? And you can start just saying stuff on top of it. Like, if I had a more broad brand I could work with, I would completely be doing that stuff. I mean, we kind of do it. We kind of plug our DVDs and put WWE, WWE Raw, you know, hey, this guy used to be here and stuff. You know, that's how, that's how Twitter works. SD Jones wouldn't have lost so fast to King Kong Bundy if his name was Special DiGiorno Jones. Oh, my. <laughs> like they're, they're they're really going all out. I don't know why they did this last night, but I'm absolutely okay with it if they did it for every RAW from now on. <laughs> awesome, amazing. All right, guys. On that note, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Tell me, what did you learn from wrestling this week, LB? What did I learn from wrestling this week, Sword? Well, I'll tell you. I learned that uh, that you're gonna have to come back to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How about you, man, Mike? Uh, damn it. Um, I learned that Samoa Joe came back, and the crowd went mild. Mm. <laughs> what about you, Bobby? I learned that uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan can't cheat properly. Oh, no. No one on Legends House can cheat properly. <laughs> Terrible. All right, I watched that again because we were talking through a lot of it and I didn't pay attention to it. They thought Jimmy Hart was cheating after Hillbilly yeah. Finn gave the answer. Yeah. Oh. I feel like there's a lot of constructive storytelling with the footage that they have there it's on that show. It's sad when Shawn Michaels is the most rational person on that Legends House show. <laughs> you can tell Shawn Michaels has actually been incorporated into society like a normal, advanced-aged yeah. human. The rest of those people do not know how to function in a civilized society. They really don't. And God damn it, they can't cook. Oh, it, uh, like I, I've been saying every week, the show is three-fourths food preparation. It really hey, is. If you look at the next show, they have a fight over dinner. Oh, Iron Sheik is on next week. Oh, my yeah. God. This week. Oh, yeah. man. So, yeah. No wonder it goes south, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you you know, know, and it's a I've, – I've, I've said this before about Legends House. They got really lucky picking the people they want on this show and none of them dying. 
Yes. Because you think Gary Busey, our cheek, like there's there's a lot of people who could have been dead at any moment on Legends House in the two years between when they filmed it and when they aired it. They got really, really lucky. Wow. Uh, I learned that Hacksaw is a lost puppy without Piper. That was weird. Oh, that was that was a little unnerving. Yeah, a little bit. I, you know, I although I, it kind of makes sense because I feel like um, witnessing what I did at WrestleCon, I feel like his wife and and kids kind of take care of him as far as like you have to do X, Y, and Z and, and be here and stuff. Like I think like they kind of are his personal assistants, you know. Uh, so I, and having somebody to talk to because he didn't seem very talkative, you know. I talked to his wife and his and his daughter, but. You know, not, I didn't really get into a conversation with him and stuff, but I don't know. I mean, that's, that's just my... weird because I, I saw when I saw him in New York Comic Con, he was very engaging with everyone. Nah, not terribly. Like some of the people come around and saying ho and stuff, you know. But 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 then you know he's turning it on for the fans, and I think that's another uh, issue with a lot of these guys. They know how to turn on the fans, but they have problems. Like I mean, you kind of see it with the show. They're all like, yeah, we all work together and stuff, but we don't really have conversations or haven't had the opportunity to. Or don't travel together or something like that, right? Um, and I think that's what you're kind of seeing come out there. And it just, an unfortunate part is it looks really sad to the outsiders, you know. Um, but really it's like, hey, these guys kind of had a different go at things, you know. Uh, they had different experiences. And um, and I don't know. It, it's, uh, I don't know. It's interesting to look at uh, from the outside, I'm sure. So. Um, LB. Do we got All something? Right, I got it. Yeah, we got it? I got one. Okay. I learned how to spell rest. <laughs> if you go right now to the Mayhem Show Facebook page, there's a video posted, and it is, who is it? Who is it singing, Bobby? Oh, let me see. I have to look. The gentleman's name is Glenn Goza. G-O-Z-A. Glenn Goza. He he sings the greatest song you've ever heard in your life, and it's about wrestling. And he it's spells it many times. R a s s l i n. That's wrestling. It is the greatest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and I am starting a petition uh, to the White House. We are going to get a thousand signatures. We're going to petition the White House to change the official Mayhem Show entrance theme to R a s s l i n. That's wrestling. Maybe, maybe we could just get Basic Sickness to cover it. Yeah. Ooh. I would fucking... Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Tweet him. Tweet him at Basic Sickness. Ask if he'll cover the song. Link it to him. Make it happen. Everybody tell him. Everybody link at Basic Sickness right now and say, Hey, man, can you do this for the Mayhem show? Just <laughs> cover this right amazing now, song. <laughs> yes, yes. It's a, it's a grassroots campaign. <laughs> so awesome it's something on that note guys thanks a lot for joining us uh, we're here every Tuesday at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com you can check us this and other shows that we do at wrestlingmayhemshow.com we're on iTunes Stitcher Spreaker YouTube video and audio form subscribe to us like us uh, comment share it with your friends please and also drop us a line at good times good times good times, good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or for 12206WMS0. Uh, we're also on Twitter at Mayhem Show. Find us at Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook and Google Plus, and especially the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. And, uh, and with that, uh, uh, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you to our great chat room. Mayhem out. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Just wait.